You guys see a guy like me cover a lot of companies on this channel, but one of the questions that many of you guys might be asking is how the heck does this guy learn so much about so many companies so quickly? And so in this video, guys, I'm going to teach you guys the tips and tricks that I've learned over my career on how to learn about companies much quicker than just reading a 10 K from the beginning to end. And so as you guys smash that like button, let's get into those tricks. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. And the first thing I want to say is thank you so much to all of you guys who have subscribed to the Patreon. You guys have allowed me to shift the content of this channel to more of a teach you guys how to fish as opposed to just telling you guys what things are valued at and walking through my research. The way that I define success for this channel is that you guys learn to become better analysts than I could ever become. And so that's what we're going to try and cover piece by piece in this Q and a series. And so as it relates to the question in this particular video, the question is, how do I learn about a company very quickly? And so I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks that I learned in my career in equity research. And so the first place that I always go, or I like to look to see if it's available is the company presentation. Now here's a company that I covered at my time in equity research by the name of Pemba. It's a Canadian midstream company. Now midstream companies are very complicated and no individual midstream company is the same as another midstream company. And so this is the type of industry where you would want a company presentation and so you can tell that this particular company puts out a monthly presentation and essentially what company presentations are are complete breakdowns of what the company does and so in other words company presentations are different than quarterly presentations because in quarterly presentations you'll get the results of that particular quarter however if you don't know the business you're gonna have to read something else like read some other disclosures that they provide to learn Learn about the business. However, company presentations are aimed at teaching you about the business. And so they focus more on telling you the story and the purpose of the business and its strategic focus. And so for example, you can see here that Pembina, they have conventional pipelines. That's these blue ones here. They have oil sands pipelines. Mind you, Pemina is an oil sands uh, midstream company. They operate out of Canada and they have properties in the US as well. So just FYI, they have transmission pipelines, they have frack units, they have gas processing plants and they have gas infrastructure. And then, you know, other than what's over here in the legend, you can see that they also have other stuff. You can see that they have an LNG, liquefied natural gas, export terminal that they're building in the province of British Columbia. And so they're telling you how much transportation capacity they have, how much storage, how much propane export capacity they have. And you can see that they own the Uck Sable down in the Chicago region as well. And it looks like they have a fraconator in Sarnia in Ontario. And so you can see that, oh, and also they have the Ruby pipeline, which is actually in the US. And so once again, you can see all of the assets that this company holds. Now, the most important thing that they're gonna tell you are the assets that they hold. And so it makes a lot of sense that for a midstream company, this would be the first or second slide. And I believe this was the first, second or third slide in their deck, it's very important. And so when you go through those company presentations, the idea is that you should be able to intelligently ask a lot of questions about the company in such a way that you've essentially learned the business at a very good level, albeit you probably still have a high level understanding. However, now you've learned sort of like enough to sort of dig deep into their disclosures and learn more and more about the business as you model it out. Look, I chose a midstream company to show you because midstream companies are very difficult to value. You almost have to build out your models on an asset by asset basis. And so, you know, they provide you with the information. You just sort of have to sort of tie everything together but you know, not every company is as complicated as a midstream company. And so not every company is going to put out a monthly company presentation. And that's fine because sometimes companies don't even put out monthly or quarterly company presentations. Sometimes they only do an investor day. And for example, there is a very popular company that I have covered their investor day in detail in a 10 part series that you guys all loved. And you know, you guys may be wondering where did I get all the information from? Well, the company's name is Alibaba and I'm going to show you exactly where I got their investor day presentation. So here's Alibaba's investor relation website. And all I did was I just typed in Alibaba investor relation. And then I went into the investor day link and this is where it brought me to it brought me to the 2021 investor day uh, page and you can see that in their 2021 investor day they had eight investor day presentation decks and so 
as you went through all of these specific investor day presentation decks, you actually got a really good understanding of the business. Now in the 10 part video that I did on the Alibaba investor day, I just summarized it, uh, these decks, but I always told you guys that you need to go in and look at these investor decks yourselves because I, there's a ton of information here and I can miss a lot of stuff. But the point is, is that by going through these investor decks and then by going through, um, their other disclosures that they provide their annual disclosures or biannual disclosures, I got a really good understanding of Alibaba to the point where people started coming to my channel every time they reported quarterly earnings because they wanted to see me interpret their quarterly earnings relative to the knowledge that I had about the business. Well, the point that I'm making to you guys is you can have the same knowledge if you go through uh, their investor decks in addition to all the other disclosures that they provide to you. And so, you know, if you're starting to learn about a company, you know, step one, look to see if they have a company presentation. But step two, as you're looking for those presentations, look to see if that they have an investor day. They might not have either, but sometimes what they also will do is in their quarterly deck, there will be certain slides that never change. And those slides are meant to teach you about the business. H&R Block is a good idea of that or a good example. In every one of their quarterly presentations, they have a lot of slides that really just show you what their overall strategy is and what the business is. And so they do it separate differently, I guess. But the point is, is that these presentation decks that these companies are building are very helpful to you. So try and use them as much as you can because it really helps you learn the business much quicker than if you just went through the 10K. Now. The next step is if you've gone and you read through the investor decks and now you want to fill in more information, what's the next step that you can take to learn more about the companies? Well, I'll tell you the next step I typically take. I'll go into a section called item one of the 10K. And what the this section of the 10K typically provides a detailed description of the company's business, what makes the company different in its industry, and it can also provide relevant industry associations that you can look up and get more information about the industry, but it also provides description of the company's segmentation, and its market opportunity. So for example, this is the 10K of Zillow, the uh, housing website. And so they tell you at the core of Zillow is our living database of more than 135 million US homes in our and our differentiated content, most notably the Zestimate is their patented proprietary automated valuation model through which we provide home value estimates. So what they're telling you is they are a online database of homes. Um, some are for sale, some have already been sold, but they have information about all of those homes in their database. And the other thing that they're telling you is that they have something called Zestimate. Now, if you went back and looked at the history of Zestimate, this tool is what caused Zillow to increase in popularity as quickly as it did because people would log on when Zillow first came out and want to see the value of their home uh, without having to pay a real estate agent for it. And so this is what created the um, uh, market dominance for the company. And they're telling you right there in the overview. The other thing that they do is they provide you with their segmentation details. So they say we are organized into three business segments, the homes, the IMT segment, and the mortgage segment. So as you try and understand this business, you got to understand what exactly the home segment is, what exactly the IMT segment is, and what exactly the mortgage segment is. Now, of course, the homes segment is um, going away or it has gone away now that that was the area where they had originally invested in and it went away. However, this particular 10K, it was still existed at the time. Now I'm not done with the 10K. There's another section in the 10K that can quickly provide you with a ton of information to the point where you can start making some really actionable decisions, whether or not you want to continue to investigate this company, if you were interested in investing in it. And that section is section seven, the management discussion and analysis section. And so you can see here, this section, provides or this is item seven the management discussions and analysis of financial conditions and results of operation this section provides an overview of the company's operations and segments it provides you a review of the business the highlights of the past operating period and comparable periods and material matter disclosure key metrics and more and so for example in this section they would tell you that they're shutting down the homes segment for zillow group and you know there this is the 2020 10k they would tell you in the 2022 10k that they've shut it down and so the point is is that all sort of like unique interesting 
current things that are going on, you'll get it in here, including just like the their management's commentary about the results in the current year. And they might even provide you some guidance in here as well. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So the point is, is that if you read one and seven, you got a really good idea of what the business does and the direction that the business is going. And so you can quickly do that. So we covered the company provided disclosures and documentation. However, some people like to use third party information. So what piece of third party information do I look at? Well, I really like the website Seeking Alpha. Now, I don't have a sponsorship with them. They've asked me to sponsor their content on the channel, but I'm just sort of like lazy. I don't really care to make money on this channel. This channel is more so for just helping you guys. And so here's what I like to look at on Seeking Alpha's website. So you can see here that I like how they organize material analysis and news for most companies. So for example, I typed in Albertsons. It's a company that's going through a merger right now. And I came here to see if there are any relevant or issues or pieces of external news that may be impacting that particular security. So I can see here a ton of analysis by people who do write ups. So you can see the date and uh, what the analysis is and you know whether they are a buy or a hold so it can tell you about their bias. But then here's a whole bunch of news on the company as well. And so I like how this is laid out. If you know, I start with the uh, company presentation, then I go into the 10 K and then I'll usually go into the seeking alpha to see if there's anything else that I sort of missed. Uh, but also, you know, in the previous video, uh, I told you that I go through the company's press releases as well. I probably would have done that by this point. And I'll just sort of read everything there is that I can get my hands on, on the company, just to make sure that I didn't miss anything in the analysis. If it's important, it's generally covered by one of those authors. And so it's a really good place to get a, a good understanding of the company's operations and material issues that you should be aware of. Now, the last place that I typically go to as I'm sort of like relearning about the companies, because sometimes, you know, I'll learn about the companies, but then I'll forget things. But I do put notes in my tracker, not just for myself, but also for you guys. And so if you go into the tracker, the tracker actually provides a shortcut to learning the company. So for example, if you go into the main tracker, this is what the main tracker looks like. It gives you the ticker symbol for the company, the name, the share price, the intrinsic value, the intrinsic value, like the share price relative to the intrinsic value. So you can see Alibaba's cheap relative to its intrinsic value. However, the value of the tracker is if you click into here, it goes right into the model for the company and so for example with Alibaba the first thing you'll know as soon as you click into it is that there are nine individual segments that you have to understand and forecast out individually if you want to model this company out well the good thing is everything's sort of organized so for example uh, what is the relevance of cloud? Because somebody might talk to you about cloud. It's like, okay, if you want to invest in cloud computing, you should invest in Alibaba. Well, if you take a look at cloud, you can see that the, comp the, the business is not material to the company's overall revenues. You can see that it's only 8.7% of the company's overall revenues relative to total China commerce, which is 70% of the company's overall revenues. However, it has been growing quickly. Notice that it grew 120, 184, 63, 53, 23, so a lot faster than any of their other segments are growing. So as you forecast this out, this provides you a lot of information. That, just this one section provides you a lot of information on how to forecast these businesses out. But there's another hidden piece of information. It's not really supposed to be hidden, but some people may not have realized that it's there is I put a lot of notes into every one of the models. Now, for example, this is the model that I have on Vista Outdoors. And so you can see that in the three year outlook for 2023, this is the current year as of the recording of this video. And notice that in these notes, you see these uh, little red tips to the top right of the um, cell. And you can see in there that I've actually put notes. So you can see in, on November 22nd of 2022, this is the guidance that they provided for the shooting products uh, revenue. And then in February of um, 2023, this is the guidance that they provided for their fiscal year 2023 shooting products uh, seg segment. And so you can see that the um, guidance actually got tuned in a bit. So they, they narrowed the range for the guidance um, one quarter over the other. So that's very helpful as you forecast this out. And so you can see that I'm actually forecasting it basically right at the low end of their narrowed guidance at 1.73. And so that's kind of how I'm doing it. But you can see by uh, looking at this that there might be some upside relative to my forecast. Now, if you want more upside, notice that they also provide medium term guidance. And so what I did is there's this note section here 
and I actually write out what their medium term guidance is. And then so you can actually compare their medium term guidance to what I have. So they're saying that they want um, a sh sport, sporting products revenues to be around 1.6, 1.8 to 2 billion by 2025. And it's a hidden right now, but you can see that I'm not really growing it significantly past that because by 2027, it's just at 1.9. And so pretty much in line, um, by 2025, but then notice that for their outdoor products, they're saying that they want this business to be at 2.5 to 3 billion in sales by fiscal year 2025. And notice what I've done. By 2027, they're just getting to 1.5 billion. So much lower than the range that they're providing us of 2.5 to 3 billion. So you could look at this model and say, look, he's too pessimistic. And of course, if you wanted to ask me directly why am I forecasting it at such a low rate, you can actually join us every month on the live Zoom calls and I'll field any one of the questions that you guys have on the models, on the assumptions, anything. However, if you just want access to the models, and uh, you just want to see um, how I'm forecasting everything out and compare it to how you're forecasting things out. Or if you just want to use my models as a second review to sort of like gauge um, if you're understanding everything correctly or if there's anything that you missed, you can get access to all the models, all of my research at this lower tier. And so I really hope that that video helped you. It's a really good shortcut learnings to sort of like how I learn about these companies very quickly. You guys let me know certain things that you guys do to learn about companies quickly in the comments below. And if you missed the last video on how I keep up to date on the information for the companies that I invest in, you can click to this video right here.